thank you for being here and uh, listening to our story. Uh, let us introduce ourselves first, right? Yes. So, on my left hand, your right hand side, is my colleague and friend, Nerko. Nerko uh, and I have a, a common passion, and that's music. So while I was working in the music industry at Labels, Nerko made a career as a musician, sharing the stage and studio with the biggest artists in Holland. But he's also uh, uh, a teacher, a teacher at our university, and he's the co-initiator and coordinator of a course called Creative Industries at our university. And there we teach our students design thinking pr uh, uh, process and especially how to create real value for clients, for customers. Besides that, he's also a dad, a sports fanatic, and he tries to learn to play the drums. The drums? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, on my right side and your left side is Mr. Dagmar Heimans. He's a really good friend of mine for some years now. And he actually teaches at the university as well, but he's a great entrepreneur with a lot of failure, failures he failed many times. Uh, setting up companies and among others, he set up uh, the first crowdfunding platform called Celevent, which, which was a really interesting thing back in the day. Uh, he's a father of three girls. And he's also married to a woman, so he lives in a house wow. with four females. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which deserves a lot of respect, I think. But uh, he, he loves shopping. Oh, no, he doesn't. And he, he just found a new hobby, which is to learn Bosnian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let us start. Uh, if you want to know anything, anything more about us we can discuss it later uh, but uh, again we would like to tell you and take you a little bit to the world where you can create products and services that customers really want yeah but before that uh, we want to ask you a question just have a read please who thinks that 12% of new products and services fail after introduction. Please raise your hand. Nobody? Okay. Who thinks... Oh, Harris. <laughs> Who thinks it's... Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's trigger right. happy, trigger happy figure. <laughs> Actually, it's 72%. Yeah. It's miserably failed. <laughs> yeah, we failed already. Okay. So, what does it mean, actually? Yeah, what does it, it mean? that seven out of every ten new products and services or failures are completely ignored by customers. Why? Why is that? Because they are all created from an idea of a company, uh, a startup or a bigger company, but not from the starting point of the actual wants and needs and issues of the client. So there is no perfect fit between the product and services and what the customer is looking for. And uh, we have an idea, just light idea, how companies uh, actually can solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you show us the next slide? Uh, right now we tend to live in the world where these kind of sentences are uh, common things. We have a great product, but unfortunately. The market isn't ready for it yet. Probably you've heard something similar to this yeah. a couple of times in your life. Well, or what, thought it maybe. What happens if you create a product or a service and that you like 1,000 years ahead of time? Can you show us the picture? Do any of you know what this thing is? Have you ever heard of Nikola Tesla? One of the great inventors of our time, of our history, actually. Well, this is one of his inventions. It's probably some, some wireless kind of thing that can transfer electricity from that thing to the flying UFOs where people, huh? I think, supersonic airships. And this was 18-something? Yes, 19-something, 100 years ago. So there were no clients who had needs fitting this invention. Actually, there are no spaceships yet. No. no okay. so not. You get the idea, right? That Nobody is using electricity at that time. Yeah. Or hardly. Yeah. So, Nikola Tesla, 
great inventor, maybe more an artist great than, a, than a business guy. He, he invented great stuff, but created no value to the clients, to the people at that time. He was going to say it later on. So, value proposition, if, if I would ask every single one of you what value is, I would get like probably, I think there are like 1800 people in the room, I would get 1800, this for television, 1800 different answers. If I would ask you what's the value proposition, I would get 3600 different answers. But actually, value proposition is something that's very simple to us anyway. Who are we as a company? What, what is our identity, right? Uh, what do we do? Product services, just describe the things. For, for who we do what we do? And the most important, probably the most important thing, why are we different than our competitors? How can we be ahead of our competition? Yeah, so actually a value proposition describes, gives you the, the reasons why customers would go to you instead of your competitor. Exactly. And it's in the heart, the value proposition is in the heart of your business model. I have a question for you guys. Uh, do you know this thing? Who knows this thing? Please raise your hand. Who have never seen this thing? <laughs> okay, so people who, who have ever seen, do, do you know how it works? Please raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so I don't, I don't even need to go further. To, to the next question, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Just to, to explain in, in a brief kind of way what this thing is about. So this is actually a business model, Canvas. <laughs> business models are something that you do and it's basically wrapped around how do you do what you do and how you make profit or how you grow. So this side of the Canvas is all about value proposition, customer segments, what kind of relationships you are building with your customers and channels. Where do I sell our products? How do I communicate with the, with the customers yeah. or users or whatever? So that's the right in, side. In, in, in traditional terms, you would say marketing and sales. Marketing and sales, yeah. And the left side is actually about the processes and how you organize your business. So what kind of resources do you need? It could be, I need a laptop, I need this beautiful building with just a little tiny swimming pool in it, you know, <laughs> just in case somebody feels like... Important key resources. Yeah. What kind of activities are we actually doing? What partners do we need? And then it becomes interesting. How do we make money and what are our costs? As long as this side of the canvas is higher than that side, you're good. Yeah. So this thing is created by two guys named Osterwalder and Pinur about 15 years ago. And they created it as a tool to be able to create value for your business and helping you discuss stuff uh, about your business and make it uh, get a good overview and have a discussion with your team. Okay, who are our customers? What are we actually doing? That's a really helpful tool. Yeah, and how we organize a business. You, you can call it like a discussion piece, you know, with your team, with your colleagues, with your co-workers, let's just have a talk and fill all these things. It's, it's actually meant to be used in a really quick, yeah. iterative way. So in, two, I think it was 2007, they Could came, be. yeah, so I, I founded, I co-founded a company called Celebant, and uh, they were writing this book, and they were uh, traveling, meeting with a lot of uh, uh, companies, and they came to us. So, to be honest, when they first explained this to me, I no idea. But in the end, I started to understand it because only this part, the customer segment, me and the two partners, we had, I, I think, two week long discussion about our, our customers. So it really helped us in the end to make it more and to get a good understanding of what we were doing. Pretty silly for three guys who started their own company, but we had different ideas. We never discussed that. But we are not going to discuss no. this model tonight. We're just going to zoom into the heart of the thing. That's okay with you. Yeah, because Osterwalder and Vineur, they thought, okay, it's nice to create value for your business, but you can only create value for your business if you create value for your customers. And this canvas doesn't work for that. It's, it's not a tool for that. So what did they do? They zoomed in in two parts of the canvas the value proposition, 
and the customer sends. Okay, and that's a value proposition canvas. Yeah. So how do you actually use this thing? Yeah, well, first look at it, it has two parts, two distinctive parts. On the right hand side, you see the name, the circle, customer profile. This describes the needs, the wants of your uh, customer. There are three parts in it, we will go to get uh, later to that, customer jobs, pains, and games. On the left hand side, that's where you create your value proposition. So a list of all the products and services that the clients can purchase uh, and all the other stuff that can make your clients happy. And uh, if, if you're okay with it, we can zoom in right now in, into explaining how this works. Yeah. But again, designing a great value proposition means you need to deeply understand your customers, which I know, which we realize is really hard. Especially if you're working on products and services when you're not, where you're not directly connected to the users. Yeah. I understand that your company, Symphony, could work on some projects uh, with a lot of different teams from a lot of different kind of, you know, areas, working on different projects, so you're not always necessarily in direct contact with your end users. But anyways, if you want to create a great value, you need to understand your users. It sounds really simple, but it's really hard. So we'll try to give you some tools to actually have a starting point in understanding your either clients or users. Yeah. So. Because the customer is so important, you start on the right hand side, like Chinese or Iraq. So let's say we have a person, and I call, always call this person uh, Hanky Panky. Hanky Panky is a really nice guy, but he will be our kind of synonym for our customer. But anyways, uh, we always start with understanding what jobs a person, client, actually does and uh, can you give us oh, some yeah. examples of uh, yeah so, so the three parts the first part on the right hand side is the customer job so that's actually what is the customer wanting to do uh, and there are actually three you could say there are different types of jobs three uh, distinctive ones well, let's just grab an example yeah. somebody working here like yeah. maybe the so you drive to your to your work you wake up you have a cup of coffee you come in you use your pass you had you have a couple more coffees obviously you log into your computer and your day starts with meeting doing all that stuff yeah those are all functional jobs so you know commuting to work drinking a cup of coffee logging into the system functional so we assume that working in this company is a really cool thing because you're working on a really great project in a beautiful building and there is something, you know, I see a lot of really cool people working here. So us thinking that you are cool is a social job. Yeah, so you join work. the company because it's a cool company and you think, hey, if I join that cool company, other people think that I'm cool as well. Yeah, and then social job. On the other hand, when you when you wrap up a project, you feel really happy about it. That's emotional job. So you're doing things that makes you really proud or really happy. That could be emotional. Job. Yeah. So social is what others think, what you want that others think. Emotional is uh, feelings that you have. Exactly. So uh, on this yes. side, yeah, there are. So yeah, you have stuff to do. But every time you have stuff to do, there are troubles, obstacles, uh, all kinds of risks that you want to uh, uh, avoid. I think I have a really good example. Uh, I work at the university and my name is, my full name is Nermi Hajiarapovic. So you can imagine the email at my company is at the university is nermi.hajiarapovic at hu.nl. And then my password is also like 20 something signs. Every time I log into my laptop to do my job, it takes me like 38 minutes with my name you know, and the password. And then I have to do this every 15 minutes. Yeah? So, what kind of. So, and I, I experience this like pain. I love teaching and what I do, what I do, because I love doing what I do. But this is a, a, an example of a pain yeah. that I'm experiencing every 15 minutes, not once a day, every 15 minutes a day. Yeah, and then pain could be that the students are not acting well while well, you give class. Yeah, it could be, right? yeah, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's. Or think you 
our bad picture. Yeah. That could be a social yeah. problem, right? Yes. So, and then the last part of the customer profile is about the benefits the customer uh, wants to get out of the product. Some of those benefits are necessary, mandatory. Yeah? Like if you buy a winter coat, it's pretty mandatory that it's waterproof and keeps you warm, right? But you can also have really special, uh, good-looking coats. Yeah, yeah good-looking coats. Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So this is the customer profile. Let's try and t uh, uh, pick a real existing product and uh, uh, see how it would look for that product. Do any of you rec recognize this thing? What do you think this Tesla is? Tesla second time. Sorry? Tesla second time. Tesla? Second time. Second time. Yeah. And Tesla on yeah. Three. It's, the, three. it's a different Tesla, but yeah. it's, it's a, a Elon Musk Tesla? got the name from uh, Nikola. Right. Exactly. But what is it? <laughs> it's not a bicycle, Madrix. Thank you for your... <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah, it's electric car, right? <laughs> yeah. And it, do you think it would? Yeah, I mean, I think, do you like it? It's not. It's I think not your kind of thing. No, okay. but, but a lot of people good. think it's a really good looking car, and they really want it. Is this car popular in the, in the, uh, Bosnia Herzegovina? No. <laughs> yes, a more paper better. Sorry, on a more paper better. On a more paper. Yeah, on but not on the street. We have, I, we have 38 uh, electric vehicles. 38 electrical vehicles in this country. Yeah, in, in Holland it's a really big thing because it was subsidized and, and there, this whole uh, energy transition, blah, blah, so there are many driving around. But anyways, I was just wondering. So uh, you all obviously know it's a Tesla. Yeah. And we would like to show you how, to, how you could use a value proposition canvas to analyze what they did in retrospective. But this is what they did before actually building this car, we assume. Yeah, anyways. So there's our persona, Henky Panky. Meet Henky Panky. He's, uh, how old is he, 45 years old? Something like that. Yeah, he's upper middle class. Sporty guy, really active on Instagram, showing off the good life, stuff like that. It's triathlon. Yeah, oh, yeah. From married, three kids. Oh, three kids, okay, great. How much does he, is he making? A lot. No. A, A lot. lot. Enough. Yeah, let's say. Because the Tesla is not a cheap car, right? Yeah, Tesla is pretty, pretty expensive car, actually. Yeah. So, meet Hanky Panky, and uh, he needs a transportation something, but he's really conscious about the environment. So he wants to switch from, let's say, Audi A6, all-road, Quattro, 2.7, TDI, V6, whatever thing from 2008. What are all the jobs that Hanky Panky actually needs to get get done? So can you? I, I, I don't know this. I never, you know. Yeah. What 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 what, what is be different from others? Yeah, that's that's a, an emotional job, right? That's he wants to feel <coughs> different than other people in the in the street or in the city. Yeah, because we're all unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And an occasional long distance trip. Functional. Because he needs to... Yeah, to go on a holiday, maybe he wants to drive to Sarajevo, whatever, from yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah, some of you drive to city and back, back and forth. Yeah. And what is, oh, I don't know this word, convey, but what is this? Convey, convey image, image of success. So he wants that other people think Hanky Panky is a really successful guy. Social job. Personal mobility, just move and commute, commute to work. I think you all Clearly understand. Clearly functional that. jobs. So in order to... Uh, get this car, he also experiences some pains. Can we start with lack of charging stations? How many charging stations do you have in Boston? <laughs> 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 huh? So you just, you know, get some electricity and <laughs> yeah. really long cable. So you, you understand this pain. I, I think acquiring Tesla right now in Bosnia wouldn't be a really smart thing to do, right? Well, you would stand out. But you would stand out, yeah. People would talk about you, yeah. yeah. And what, what's, what's this frequent charging, accident and harm? Please take us through that. Yeah, so he, he has kids. He wants them to, uh, to be safe in the car, but he also wants, you know, every day long commute to be safe and 
girl uh, come home safely. Fear, oh, fear of death battery. Yeah, imagine doing a, a trip with, uh, in the weekend with your uh, kids, you're on a mountain. Uh, battery dies. Battery dies. And there are like oh, bears right. and wolves and stuff. Yeah, wolf. You don't want to be that bad. And, yeah, well, and, and so what are the gains actually if he buys the car? Yeah, so the important one is, uh, at first, you know, you see the high safety ratings. That's what he's looking, he's looking for. It's, so sometimes there's a real connection between the gains and the pain, but sometimes the gains are extra on top of the, uh, the, uh, the, the pains. Back in the day, we used to want to buy a Volvo because it had an image, if you understand, or if you remember, of being really safe. The safest like car. Swedish yeah. steel. So uh, what's uh, brand recognition? Yeah, he wants, you know, he wants that. That's more connected to the, uh, uh, the social job of conveying uh, a range of success. So he wants to drive a car that is a, a known brand and a, a brand, a luxury brand. So other cars he would look at was probably BMW, Mercedes, stuff like that. And, and the design thing is just experiencing the beauty of of design and yeah. other people actually Yeah, that's, uh, that's also linked to his persona showing off on, on Instagram and stuff like that. And then is, there's the compliments from friends. That's also connected to the convey an image of success. Yeah. So do you guys, are you still with us? Yeah? <laughs> are you? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Please hang on, we'll, we'll be there, we'll get there. Okay, next time. So, just to get back, I know many of you are interested in design thinking. Dagmar and I, we use it, it's a method, but we don't know much about it. Actually, there are a couple of people in this room who are specialists in design thinking. So we'll try and we hope to, if you're interested in this, to organize some kind of webinar or something for you guys that you can follow in the future. Maybe with you, but maybe with other people. And, uh, but just to, to understand how this works, uh, the first two, uh, design thinking is, is a process of actually in a, in a relatively short periods of time creating products, testing products in, inter in iterations, you know, just like you guys know like agile, kind of, you go and you create, you test, you go back. So the first two phases, emphasize and define, are actually uh, uh, phases where you define your customer segments as we discussed before, uh, which means uh, how do we understand, how do we uh, uh, get to know our customers, you know, with the pains, gains and the jobs, actually. So you can interview them, seek to understand, non-judgmental, actually we did a little design thinking kind of thing here today, we talk with a couple of your colleagues and we'll get back with, to you with some results. Yeah. And then the other phases? Uh, yeah, so the, uh, actually, so empathize is the process of gathering that information and divine, that's actually where you can use, in, the, in that process, you can use the customer profile to make a structure of all that information and prioritize and seek the most important things. But then again, we don't know much about this, so... No. Yeah. And then, so when you have all that information clear for you, you can go into ideate, create your value proposition. And that's where the value map is uh, a really handy tool. Yeah. Right? So, customer profile is about observing, interviewing, value map is about creating. So, what you see here is products and services. And we, when we were looking at Symphony's website, we realized that you guys do a lot. For, for a lot. Let's try to remember. <coughs> Uh, something, something, development, and to end. To end. Yeah. Uh, augmenting teams? Yeah, <laughs> augmenting teams, UI, UX, project management, uh, for a lot of industries. So you don't have to put only one product or service here. You can put them all, because you do a lot. And that's good to understand. You can also use all of the segments that you work for. But how this thing actually works, is to divide segments and products. Yeah, so you products. make it different value proposition canvas for every set. So it's not one canvas for everything, it's just different value proposition canvases, value propositions for different kinds. And we understand you also have uh, different value propositions. So it's actually, you're on a really good track. Yeah. yeah. 
So again, also on the value map side, you have three parts. The first part is products and services. Kind of a, a list of all the well, what we've seen on your website, the stuff that people can purchase with you. And then we have uh, this little and pill. Then, yeah. On the bottom, what is that? The little pill, that's, well, it's the medicine. It's the medicine for the pains. So it's the pain relievers. Like uh, aspirin or paracetamol? Yeah, you have a you take a... Uh, yeah, exactly. So we discussed the pains before. So actually, can you give us, give us like an example what, what the pain relievers So, so you had a problem with, with all that logging in and, and, uh, and every, every five minutes long name. Uh, a pain reliever would be uh, a system at our university that needs only one time login for every service for a day. Or iris scan. Or example, iris scan. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They just know it's me. Face recognition, a code like PIN code 07, oh, I don't have the one. Uh, uh, like 070, my, my date of birth or whatever, which would take me only one. Oh, okay, that was too much. <laughs> I don't use that as a password, please, guys. Okay, yeah. and, and then at the top we have uh, this little flash thing, it's called Game Creators. What so that? that's what, what would make people really happy, right? So in, in the, uh, the Tesla the case, we go into that, it's a, a car with more than four seats. Yeah, okay. we will explain this yeah. based on the example of Tesla later on. Uh, so, uh, so we had that right, right hand side, right? We, we, did our thingy with the, the sticky notes. That's also how you use it, right? You make a big printout, you stick it to the wall, and with your team you have different colors of sticky notes, and go, be creative. It's also a really cool thing because you can always check it out in retrospective and see the different phases, different time periods or whatever. So, yeah, uh, yeah okay, so we know a lot about customer. Tell us about the value map. Yeah. So what is important that product and services linked to jobs to be done, pain relievers obviously are linked to the banks and the game creators are linked to the games, the benefits that the customer is seeking. So in case of the Tesla, it's actually, no, it's the, it's the product list. We have a, a Model S in, with different types of motors we have Model X, now we have Model 3, there comes Model Y. It's the, the product list, the category list, right? A pain reliever, we're not going to do them all, but hey, a lack of charging stations. So what did Tesla do? Built their own charging them all, all across America and in Europe. And they have faster uh, 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 charging. So that's relieving the, the fear of lack of uh, uh, energy for your car. All right, cool. And uh, I think there is a little mistake. And then if, if, if you see the mistake, you get a beer, you will pay. Do you see the mistake in the, on, the, on this left, left hand side canvas? I know you need to be, you have to have really good eyes, I think. Maybe not the sharpest picture. Okay. Come on. I can help you, I think. Just look at the at the gains there, seeding force to seven. Do you see it now? Yeah, it's like the number of seeds is not a pain It's exactly it's a game creator. Yeah. Yeah. So do you so understand? You want a beer? <laughs> you got a beer. <laughs> and there is also one one interesting thing as well. What was the other interesting thing on canvas? Eight years battery warranty. Yeah. How, why, why is it not here? Actually, so it's, it is a service, but it's actually also uh, a paper reliever because it, it takes away the, uh, the fear of that battery, right? Okay, so it can be on the list of your products and services, but it can also be a pain reliever. Yeah, and so take one of the gate creators, the self-driving car, the autopilot uh, of Tesla is a really cool way to impress friends and family and neighbors. But the most important thing, their hands up in the air. Most important thing, I just want to address this one more time. Value proposition is who are we? What do we do? For who and why are we different, better, cheaper, faster than the rest of our 
uh, competitors of competition. Yeah, so and if you do this right, you have found the fit. And right. I think uh, Tesla did a really good job. In they did a, a decent job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> decent enough to build rocket ships. So. Yeah. yeah, they did a really good job. Yeah. yeah. So are we there? So we have, now we have the value prop proposition clear. We know what the customer wants. Are we ready? No, we are not because do you remember the business model canvas? Like the thing? Once you have this, you go back and you have to organize business around it. So you need to uh, kind of deliver the value proposition to the customer. One, one, one important thing, yep. the value is only there if there is a certain kind of transaction. If people don't buy your, or use your products, there cannot be value. Actually. Yeah, so actually in, in, in the, uh, uh, what we call this is here we have problem solution fit. So people say, hey, that's a cool uh, car that solves my problem, but now the most important part is people also have to buy product. And that's the next step, creating the product market fit. And that's where you, uh, the business model comes in place. Exactly. But also, that's not a theme of tonight. No. Tonight, we just wanted to discuss this uh, value proposition design canvas. Yeah. And again, remember, it all starts with the customer. Uh, know them, have a clear understanding of their what. The more you know, the better. Because it can learn you a lot and maybe come, you come with really cool new stuff. Never far. So, how do you do this? You know, observe, interview, and when you interview them, there are a lot of things that you can ask. But there are three really important questions. Why? 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 <laughs> And why? <laughs> let us let us let us take you through a little situation that probably every one of us can be in. So uh, yeah, yeah, I need the drill. You you bought a, a drilling machine, right? Yeah. yeah. Why? It's a cool thing to have. I mean, we we men we like machines. But what are you doing with it? Make holes. Ah, but why yeah. do you need a hole? Why do I need a hole? Mm -hmm. Not to hang some painting, whatever my wife. Why do you want that? Uh, because it looks really good on the wall. Okay, so now, think back. Do you really need a drilling machine? Oh yeah, and I, no, 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 I also need it as a conversation piece. Ah. People come for dinner, wine and stuff, and oh, beautiful picture, and I'm not into art. So, you know, but what you actually, you're, you're seeking something that makes a pain, painting on your wall, right? That yeah, sounds exactly. different than a drilling machine. So I don't need a drilling machine. So why are you asking me this? Because I'm, I'm looking for what you actually need. What is it that you want? Okay. And you're not, you're not wanting a, a drilling machine. You're not even wanting to make a hole, right? I will give you another example just to add something. When, whenever I make a hole in my wall, I tend to destroy the whole wall. You know, either the hole is too big, yeah. or you know, I the, missed stuff. Uh, the plug is too small, or yeah, and then the picture hangs. Mess in the house. Yeah, mess all the stuff. So actually, I would love. So this whole process, it's all value. People making these machines, selling the machines, painting. I would the, the, like the little drills that break. Exactly. And then you have, don't have a, a spare one. And you have to go back to the store. Oh shit! You Stop understand close. this, right? You have all been in this situation. Where you can add values in, in every step of this process, but I, as a customer in this case, would love to, when I acquire a picture on a painting, just to kind of have it hang on my wall perfectly on the place where I want it, so I can have a good conversation with in my friends. Perfect horizontal line. There is this company in the Netherlands, and it's called Cool Blue. Uh, people from Holland know it, I don't know. It's kind of Amazon, where you can buy stuff online. But what they actually do, if your washing machine breaks, you can order it, they will deliver it either same day or next day, even if you live on the seventh floor with broken elevator or another question of water, you know. And they will take the old one with them and throw it actually away on the place where you're supposed to throw this thing without charging actually extra money. Yeah, the connecting makes sure that it all works. Yeah. So taking away a lot of pains of buying washing machines. 
uh, they're really cool and they always make kind of party when they deliver stuff, you know, it's explosion, fire, helicopters, chains, you know, like the whole <laughs> thank you, we love you with confetti and stuff. Little things, but they're doing really well now. And if Amazon doesn't change their proposition, um, you know, th th they could lose the battle in the Netherlands anyway. And Amazon is big. Yeah, so Cool Blue is a couple of steps ahead of Amazon. Actually, uh, and they're, they're, they're actually, smaller, but they're doing better and business. And they country. deliver a, a, a lot in ele electric vehicles, which is kind of thing people in Holland like. Very environment conscious, kind of sustainable mindset. So it's it's really value added. It's not. I mean, you got, you all know it's. Uh, there is at this moment so much money in the world, so people care about other things than just materialistic kind of buying cheap stuff from whatever. A little story about the drilling machine. Yeah. So now think of your own products and services. What are you? Are you selling the, the drilling machine? Are you selling the drill? Are you selling the battery? The battery that only works with this specific drilling machine, or are you selling a home? Or are you selling the painting with the surface that it's on their wall? Maybe you're selling experience around the product, which is something completely different than just the machine, you know? So how you package it, deliver it, whatever. We discussed that already. Yeah. So, actually, so, uh, if people come to you and say, we need an augmented team, yeah, you have to. Why? Why do you need that? Because we need extra people. But why do you need extra people for what? And if you ask enough and right questions and listen carefully, you will discover uh, that there is a lot of extra business that your competitors are not doing yet. But they still are still selling that drip. I have a question for you, maybe specific for, for this industry. Let's say we're working on a product uh, and we don't have any relationship with the users. And we're working with a lot of people. How, how do you actually get to so, uh, the user? Say a big team of developers? Or yeah, let's say 100, 200, whatever, I don't know. And, and we're working on something really cool and we all feel it's a cool brand, you know, whatever, fashion or what, IT, and, but how do we you know, because there are a lot of players. Do you have any idea? Yeah, I well, I, I, probably it's not the best idea to say you have 50 or 100 developers working on that project to let them all uh, empathize with the end users, but create a small team that does interviews, observe the end users. So in there goes, say you're working for, for the university, uh, of our university, you, you want to sit next to Nerco in a day, see what, what, what he's doing with the systems. Write it down and listen carefully. So ask questions and let the other people speak. But do it wisely, let a, a small team compile all that information, let them bring that back. Use the sticky notes on the whole customer profile, have discussions with a bigger team, with the engineers. So how can we solve this? What can we do to really connect with uh, the wants and the needs of your clients. And eventually create products and services that people actually want and use. Yeah, and, and helping you be a couple of steps, five, four, six steps ahead of your competitors. Because hey, that's what we're proactive want. instead of reactive. That's what we want. Okay. So uh, I would like to uh, repeat just one more thing, one more time. Value proposition is four things. Who we are, what is our identity. You know, we can be whoever we want to be, but it's also about image. Who am I in the perception of other people? How do they see me? How do they feel me? So there could be a really big gap between who you are or who you want to be and how people see you. We all know this. The second one is what do we do? So what kind of products and services we cannot do everything, that would be kind of too much. So the focus of really understanding what you do. Third thing is, but you already heard this four times, who are our customers? And the last thing, why are we different than the competitors or the rest of our competition? Yeah, and what makes us ahead of our competitors?
that makes our clients come to us and not to the competitor. Exactly. I think uh, we should wrap it up here. Yeah, so this is a, a, a short, a brief introduction of the value proposition design, or you can dive a lot deeper in it. Uh, first of all, you also made a book. So if you want to know more, you can buy the book. Download the PDF. Na name is Value Proposition Canvas Org. <laughs> uh, or talk to us, uh, and we can dive deeper and maybe look at actual stuff that you're working on. We would love to invite you now to, if you have any questions, to ask us those, and we can try to give you uh, honest answers. Uh, yes, please. I cannot hear you. Just wait a second, there will be a... Oh, we're not in a hurry. Hello. Yeah. So, when you're doing user interviews, and find out what your customer is, and you gather all these personalities and needs and wants from the customer, uh, how do you go back and create Hanky Panky? How do you clear your biases towards these gathered uh, attributes, needs and wants, and what do you, how do you decide what do you want to join Hanky Panky? What, what, what are their needs? Can you repeat the question? No, uh, maybe <laughs> to be honest. Just to be on the same uh, level here. Uh, so actually, well, if I understand you correctly, so you, uh, you said you, you've interviewed uh, customers, you compile yeah. a lot of information, yeah. and now yeah. you want to make a decision design. on, yeah. yeah, so you can prioritize. Um, and you can make the, uh, you can do that. Uh, but just like the whole design thinking process, it's about iteration. So uh, you start with your ideas of what the customer wants, uh, you, know, you make your assumptions uh, based on maybe some first interviews, uh, information that you found elsewhere. And then a really important part is, again, go out of the building and speak with them. Is this art? And, and test if your assumptions are true. Yeah, so, so basically the Hanky Panky's uh, needs and wants are not locked in at the beginning. No, yeah, no it's, it's an iterative. Yeah. Like the whole design thinking process. And the same is for, uh, in the end, so you, you probably go a couple, of, a couple of times around to get your customer profile straight, correct? And then you do the same with your, then you, you create your value map. Actually also, you know, you do uh, brainstorming and stuff like that. You have your assumptions and then get as quickly as you can out of the building and test it. You know, mock-ups, uh, mood boards, prototype, MVPs, you always know, it's never, it's never, it's not a linear kind of, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, process, it's always kind of iterative. Do you have, have multiple personas or just? You can, you, yeah, you can have as, as many segments as you can. Just look at Tesla, they have these big ones, X, Tesla X model, it's really big for seven persons, you know where the doors go like this with autopilot options. And it's for uh, people earning more money, traveling maybe longer distances, who have like four kids. S model, we discussed that, but there, there is also model three. Yeah. Cheaper and you know, smaller and whatever, you know. So you're always segmenting and you're positioning yourself on the market, maybe using your strengths as a company. But sometimes maybe yeah. using, you know, whatever, what's happening, like trends and like. But be careful not to push different customer segments in one profile because then it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. The should, should we should make match between the products and the product. Yeah. Yeah. That, but, yeah. But actually the other way around. So yeah, sure you can do you can create a product and then but then uh, you have to find the customer that needs that product, right? So it's it's easier to find out what the customer wants and then create something you know yeah, because uh, you know, when you're starting to slightly fuzzy, you know, you mentioned three, three uh, types of testing models and one hanky panky. Yeah. So, maybe it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah, you. Good question. You're, you're, uh, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> 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 Any other questions or remarks? Okay. Can I? Thank you, Zach. Um, 
Hi, I'm Ermin, uh, and welcome to Sarel. It was a pleasure to uh, be part of this. I think it's really interesting, this beat to be keynote you did. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, I wanted to uh, touch base on copywriting. So I, I know this was a brief presentation, but um, just, um, you know, looking at new, all these new products and product expansion today, if you look at, for example, Product Hunt, copywriting is playing a huge role in um, user acquisition, I would say. So um, users oftentimes would just open up a landing page and if they read a sentence, if it's a good value proposition, if it's communicated uh, good enough, they're going to convert. Um, one good example is Notion. I'm not, I'm not sure if you heard Notion, but Notion actually pioneered this thing where they were really just honest about their value proposition. Yeah. They, they said, uh, their current landing page says one work, workplace, multiple teams, but initially uh, they said uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Asana, Trello, forget about it. Yeah. Notion. It's Notion. So they grew like Right now, they are like $10 billion uh, um, dollars in valuation. So I think that's a, an interesting thing. Uh, this is all good and complex and interesting, but like good copywriting can, you know, do a magic, m magic tricks for, for products, I think. Um, Thank you for sharing. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's one thing. Um, yeah. That's not primarily a question, it's just an observation. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's and, and the other thing I wanted to mention is, because this whole methodology is actually, um, the design thinking uh, methodology uh, is actually um, a ground floor or a base for design sprint, right? Uh, so I'm interested on maybe your opinion, is design sprint something that is valuable in Europe, in the world, as a service, or Maybe, do you think uh, we should, or uh, Symphony should, or could be offering dedicated design sprint service for their clients? Uh, well, <laughs> really good remark. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And really good question. Uh, behind you, there are three people sitting. If you just turn around, you will see them. Siva, Sus, and Paulina. <laughs> and they know all about design thinking. I think if you're really interested, they can, they can actually argument that the answer to your question is a yes. One remark, we don't consider design thinking as a service. It's a method. And this, this means culture, changing the way you do stuff, changing the way how fast, how often you do stuff. And you know, we've always done this like this, and it worked, it's okay. But I think there is a shift in, we always done it like this, Come, like, you know, Titanic was a really good ship, it sank, you know. But they always did it like that. So we need to kind of, but please talk with them. Grab a glass of water or, or a yes, Fanta sir. and please ask them. They're yes, really sir. open to agree. Okay. To come back to your uh, uh, remark uh, on copywriting. You can use this for copywriting as well, because if you don't know what your customer wants, what are you going to run? Yeah. And, and actually that's what a lot of uh, electronic companies did wrong in, in the 90s. They, they listed all kinds of stuff that their computer could do or their music machine could do. People weren't interested yes. in that. Uh, is this working? We don't hear you. Is this working? Yeah, I don't want to just add to that point. I mean, uh, first iPod has a brilliant um, one-line sentence. It's, uh, it, doesn't, it, it wasn't saying like 64 gigs so you can store a, a lots of music. It just said uh, 1,000 songs yeah, in your exactly. pocket. Yeah, and, and, I, was, and I don't care how everything works as a consumer. I want that. Exactly, really good remark. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Is this thing working? Oh, it's a question over here. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, so, um, this is my first time seeing this, so I just want to ask, uh, in the value proposition canvas, you, there was a part of the games where you wrote, uh, where was the card of, um, you would get compliments from a friend, or something about prestige, and my understanding was that you make this before the product is there, so we, we don't know yeah. if the yeah. Tesla um, so will be a recognized brand. Mm -hmm. They didn't know it at the time, so some of the points there were really like um, they they weren't uh, theoretical in a sense that you know what problem you're going to solve, what you're trying to solve. Uh, but for me, it um, looked like that you would. How would you know that you would get compliments from a friend? Yeah. How how is that uh, in a part of the game? That's the question. Can I can I? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I would love to answer that, uh, and that you make sure that your brand is recognizable. So how do you do that? Invest a lot of money in a great marketing machine, in communication, and I know some people who work here in Symphony, they, they are like kick-ass marketing people, so you know, but you need to focus more on getting your brand to, you know, brand awareness through communication, attitude towards the brand, changing it through market, strategic marketing communication, and getting people to actually want to buy the thing. Tesla is only, how old is the company, like car? 10 years or so? No, it's not, Left? it's really old, 30 or 40 years. It's actually a Dutch car company, and then Elon Musk acquired the Tesla because it was already registered as a, as a brand name, really cool name actually. But this Tesla exists only for, let's say, let's say 15 years, but it's not 15, it's probably 12. So in 12 years, you all knew Tesla, right? You all know brand Tesla, right? It's only 12 years. Facebook exists 14, 15 years maybe, max? Yeah. I, when, I, you know, when, when I studied, there was no internet. You know? So it can be virtual. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you choose like, to, to, that that's something that people need, then you can focus on that as well. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to create this great, electric, good-looking, expensive car if nobody knows what, what the thing is. Is that kind of answer to your question? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still kind of confused about it because it seems like you are going from a point where you have unlimited resources to do all the branding and uh, investing in that. Like, the context is really important. I think Elon Musk, uh, had a lot of credibility, founding PayPal, making a lot of money. You know? yeah, so it's a different thing. You go like, okay, let's do this. And, and, you and know, to be honest, I've never seen the, probably they are, but personally I've never seen a TV commercial for Tesla. No. So I'm not sure what kind of budget they spent on marketing, but that's a totally different discussion. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much for your question. The point is you to have uh, every product and service that you has a, let's say, slight, slight answer to your question. Uh, basically, every product and service that we do uh, with our customers has a uh, direct material value and has emotional and value uh, for the customers. Maybe not that the sample that we see, uh, that we have seen in the presentation was not the best part. But you know, uh, each and every time, uh, the customers uh, relate to the product and service that you are doing for, for them. And there, is a, there are tools that you can use to anticipate and to predict that emotional response of your customers. Yeah, exactly. It's a good explanation. And it's really related to the, uh, uh, let's say, discovery phase of process. Maybe it's not the term that, that is used here, but you know, uh, deep understanding of what the customer needs is found in the, in the discovery. Yeah, the why, 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 why? Yeah, why, why, why? Many, many, miles, much more than three whys, believe me. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, if you, if you look at what, what uh, Tesla slash Elon Musk is doing, so he, he knew it, that he's going to make a car, an electric car. So that was, that was his defining. But actually, 
if you look at what was uh, one of the most, uh, what was the functional job, just moving from one place to another. So he's now working on different ways to move people from one place to another. It doesn't have to be a car. That's like a very specific sample of the, of the modern business, you know, because they basically, that's like it's genius in funding the, the operations. You know, they discovered the big point of the customers to have a good car, modern car, electric car for, let's say, decent money. Then they took the advance payment of so many people that he finds it for zero. <laughs> and, you know... Yeah, so that's the rest, the rest, that's the business the rest is part. history. The rest yeah. is history. It's great. But, yeah. you know, uh, maybe you should use another sample because the symphony is the very serious company working with very serious, very serious uh, customers with extremely serious projects. You know, and all these projects, uh, as far as I understood, I'm not from symphony. But as far as I understood, there is a lot of uh, job that simply doesn't know the customers and have to rely on the intermediate partners, yep. which is definitely much, 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 much tougher. So that, uh, there is a need to convey properly the information without too many noise, you know, yeah. with, without too many bias between the parties. Yeah, that's that's an important thing. Maybe so I, maybe I, I, I would continue like the discussion later on because I, I would like to okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Sorry, people. Yeah, and sorry, it's on the time. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, we have time for one last question because I know we all it was a little bit of a long talk. Thank you so much for contribution. So if you have one last question, and otherwise we can go and have some views. Uh, Thank you so much. Please. Thank you. I don't know if the mic is on. Uh, yeah, mic on. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for a great presentation. Now, when we speak about business model canvas and the value proposition, we usually, you know, uh, refer to a startup or a product that hasn't been made yet, and we're trying to decide how to uh, put it. But how does this principle apply to products that have been around for a while, but somehow environment is changing, etc.? So, how do we apply those to like six well, things? Probably? You, you could still uh, use the value proposition canvas. Sure, it's you. It's nice. No, we we had it with with uh, the drilling machine, right? How long did they exist? Your mic is really hard. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry. I tried to speak a little bit. Do, do you uh, do you like do you like McDonald's? Okay, yeah. Do you like to eat there? Uh, no. Uh, when they started, there were there were my kids forced me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Anyways, you know. and what? It, it's a really good question. I, I, I think it really hits the spot. So there is this burger kind of franchise, the biggest one in the world, most known in every country, who started selling burgers for one dollar, and their value proposition, actually a slogan mantra, was good food fast. Good food. Back in the day, in the 60s, was when kids 12 years old used to smoke cigarettes in school classes. You know what I mean? So this is what's happening in the Netherlands, just changing the, the colors of their logo. Please have a look at McDonald's, maybe history of their logos. It's becoming from red and yellow, it's moving to green. Do you know what I mean? So that's recycling the used materials. But then again, I don't know if, it, if it's case in Sarajevo, but a lot of people in the Netherlands are vegan or vegetarian. Vegan means post, without any animal products. Susie is one of them. And Sibe is vegetarian. And I also see in Sarajevo that people are still more aware of that. But it's a really great... So how do you, as McDonald's, you actually sell meat, <laughs> attract people who are vegan and vegetarian to, to your restaurants, right? So you change the whole you know, product and services offer, you're changing your logo, you're playing with, you know, products. So now they offer vegetarian chicken, McChicken, vegetarian McNuggets, vegetarian burgers, vegetarian double burgers. And they're ahead of the game. They're the first one, one of the first ones doing this because they knew there is a trend here happening and they needed to do something. Otherwise, 
you just selling burgers. That's it. Is that kind of? Yeah. And and that's how you use it. You understand your customers once again, and then you adjust your product and services offer based on the trends. So creating your value proposition is not one time job. Yeah. No, it's actually actually a circular process. It turns. Yeah. The same for your business model, right? Oh, we have an online question. Oh, oh thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Uh, so we have an online question from Sabina Scheidt, uh, who is also the lead business to business ma marketing for Symphony. She thanks for the excellent presentation. And one question from her side is how can you get a better function of the design thinking as a tool? Uh, what are you talking about business to business marketing, which is more challenging, and you have a larger challenge in emotionally triggering clients? Yeah, we, we thank you for the question and we wanted to discuss this in de detail but we only had 40 minutes because once we start talking about decision making units and all these different segments it becomes a little bit more specific and complicated yeah. at this moment. Yeah, so you all know that within a company you have different roles, uh, you have uh, the end users we talked about but there is also the decision maker, someone is financially responsible and they all have different jobs and, and uh, so let's say a brand manager of a huge financial institution like a bank what's yeah. what's, what's his so, so uh, uh, or her or her yeah. actually that was a, a client of mine a big Dutch bank uh, uh, her job what is creating and establishing uh, a known brand have a consistency in all communication that's her job like McDonald's Big, huge name. Yeah. Everybody knows it, likes it, buying yeah. products. And then somewhere else in the company, you have people creating content. So they have to work with the set of things that the brand manager is uh, uh, delivering them. But they have to you know, create a lot of uh, content that costs a lot of time. So they're seeking. They're, they're not seeking a more established brand identity. They're Pain is it costs too much time. So give me a tool, give me something that saves time and effort. And then, and then the financial the, uh, procurement manager, she was only interested in how can I save money. So different jobs, different roles, different uh, pains and gains. So uh, business to business. Yeah, we, we can't ask both. Hopefully, yes. in business to business, based on experience, it's basically you don't talk to one user. You talk to decision making unit, which could be a lot of people, and you all know, know this. Yeah. So if, if we would go to the brand manager and say, "Hey, man, you can save a lot of money," not interested. If we would go to the procurement manager and say, "Hey, we can establish a really good brand identity for your company," not interested. Door closed. Yeah. Clear. Thank you.